tell me about the basic part, uh, how the basic is, uh, references is related. So you start with this, and we uh, call a simple problem related to the process of performance of the uh, reference system. The topics that are uh, going to be covered in this class are uh, an example problem related to process of performance of the uh, wrapper absorption equation is going to go for it. Uh, NH3 water vapor absorption equation. Where NH3 stands for ammonia and uh, water uh, ammonia uh, water equation system. And the third, uh, the next of will be water lithium bromide vapor absorption Okay. It's water uh, lithium bromide vapor absorption equation. And this, uh, there are two types, a uh, four cell type and two cell type. So this will be covered, and after that, uh, it is uh, the other one is uh, E fluid vapor absorption liquidation system. E fluid means uh, it is also called as pumpless vapor absorption liquidation system where there won't be any mechanical pump or mechanical energy is required to dry the system. And the last one is uh, the comparison between vapor compression liquidation systems and vapor absorption liquidation systems. And uh, this uh, derivation was already completed in the last step we have seen. We have derived the expression for uh, quotient of performance. And uh, it, it, it is given as uh, the an I for the ideal uh, COP can be treated as a combination of Carnot efficiency, Carnot uh, heating inefficiency, and the Carnot refrigerator. So it can be taken considered as a combination of both Carnot uh, heating inefficiency and the Carnot refrigerator. So in this, uh, it is uh, it, uh, the expression uh, deals with our expression will have terms uh, related to the temperature, evaporated temperature, generated temperature, and uh, temperature of condenser and absorber. Okay, these are the uh, these are the things involved or these are the temperatures involved in the quotient of performance of the vapor absorption refrigeration system. Okay. Uh, if you take a simple problem, see here the problem is like this. In a vapor absorption refrigeration system, uh, heating coil and the refrigeration takes place at a, uh, takes place at a temperatures of uh, 150 degrees, 30 degrees and minus 20 degrees. Okay. So heating cooling and refrigeration takes place at these temperatures 150 degrees, 30 degrees and minus 20 degrees. So that means heating means it is nothing but the temperature at which the generator works or the production of vapor works. Okay, and 30 degrees is the ambient temperature or it may be it may be also considered as the temperature of absorber as well as uh, the one condenser. Okay, and the other temperature of the evaporator, the evaporator of uh, the temperature at which uh, uh, the cooling takes place or the refrigeration effect takes place. Okay, uh, they have asked to calculate that uh, the theoretical uh, COP coefficient of performance of the system, and the same problem was also to derive the COP uh, considering the temperature. If the heating temperature was in increased to 20 de uh, 200 degrees, and uh, the refrigeration temperature is decreased to minus 40 minus 40 degrees. Okay, we need to calculate the coefficient of performance of both the systems and see whether the coefficient of performance is decreasing or increasing. And if de decreasing or increasing, we need to calculate the change in theoretical CO2 also. Okay. Okay, coming to the coming to the COP, this this uh, this is the formula. Okay, where it is uh, T by T naught minus T or T G minus not uh, into T G minus T naught by T G. This this is the uh, formula that was all uh, that was uh, derived in the previous class. Okay, it can be also be written as T E by T G into T G minus T naught uh, divided by T naught minus T. In this, uh, Te is considered as the uh, refrigeration temperature, which is minus 20, by it is given in degrees per cent degree centigrade. And if it converted into Kelvin scale, it will be equal to 250, uh, 253 uh, Kelvin. Okay, and the Tg is the he uh, heating temperature or the temperature in the generator, which is 150 degrees, is given as 150 degrees centigrade, and converted into Kelvin scale, it will be 423 Kelvins. And the last one is the cooling temperature, or it may be considered as a convert into Kelvin scale, it will be 303, uh, 303 Kelvin. And substituting these values in the uh, expression for COP, uh, if you calculate the COP, it will be around 1435. Okay, already we have already mentioned that uh, for uh, any absorption system, the maximum COP that can be, or in most of the practical cases, the maximum COP that can be attained for a vapor absorption refrigeration system is around 1.4, 1 1.5. If you can't uh, pass beyond, or uh, we can't get uh, beyond uh, 1.5 or 1.4. COP. Okay, whereas if you consider the vapor uh, compression refrigeration system, you can even get 4, 5 also. Uh, COP can be even 4, 5 also. But here in, in vapor compression, uh, vapor absorption refrigeration system, it will be around 1.4 or 1.5. In this problem, we have got 1.435, which 
which is the coefficient of curve okay and coming to the second case where the temperatures are increased or temperatures are modified the diffused temperature is around minus 40 degrees centigrade and if converted into kelvin scale it will be around 233 uh, kelvin and uh, heating temperature is increased to 200 degrees from 130 degrees to 200 degrees it was increased uh, converted into kelvin scale it will be 473 the cooling temperature which is the temperature of the condenser the temperature of the condenser as well as uh, uh, absorber uh, it is uh, not changed it is it, it, uh, it will be around it is uh, same as 303 degrees kelvin okay if you substitute these values in the c expression for cop uh, the we can calculate the coefficient of performance it will be around 1.2 okay in this case uh, due to the in, due to the decrease of refrigeration temperature decrease of uh, Uh, generated temperature there is a re there is a reduction in the coefficient of performance okay there is a reduction in the coefficient of performance and if you calculate the percentage decrease of cop or percentage decrease in coefficient of performance you will both the cases comparing both the cases uh, you will get a reduction or decrease in the cop uh, and it is around 16.4 percent so this is a simple problem uh, uh, which will uh, discuss about the the variation cop with respect to variation of uh, heating value or heat temperature as well as the refrigeration effect temperature okay next okay, and then in the next topic comes sir is uh, nh3 water vapor absorption refrigeration system okay this is a simple vapor absorption system uh, where nh3 is nothing but ammonia and uh, water water uh, it is a combination of nh3 and water where nh3 acts as a uh, refrigerant and vapor uh, and water acts as a absorbent as it was uh, already mentioned we have a absorption refrigeration system there will be a refrigerant and there will be absorbent okay and this uh, it's combination of nh3 and water go to the next one and the components uh, that are present in nh3 water uh, vapor absorption refrigeration system are these are the components uh, evaporator absorber generator rectification column and deflammator and the last one is the condenser Okay, when you compare the uh, components uh, that are present in vapor compression refrigeration system with this one, okay, they both are similar, but except we have uh, one more uh, special uh, component or one more more uh, one more component which is rectification column and deflammator. Okay, and if you compare the components with respect to simple vapor com uh, vapor compression refrigeration system, okay, this uh, the fourth component won't be there. So this is rectification column. and rectification column and deflammator so what is the importance of this re rectification column and deflammator in this uh, and this uh, this component is only present in nh3 water a uh, vapor absorption system the main cause is or main reason is okay when nh3 vapor acts as a refrigerant and water vapor water acts as a absorbent okay when these two fluids are passed into a generator and when it is heated okay actually because nh3 is a refrigerant when you give heat to it only the nh3 vapor should uh, should come in but uh, because of this uh, because the boiling temperatures of uh, nh3 and water uh, does not have much difference okay they are, they are, they are only separated by uh, by temperature variation of around 100 degrees okay therefore by, by for because of this situation or because of this reason when the when the both the fluids go into the generator and when they are heated okay only nh3 has to be our uh, nh3 vapor should come out but in this case both nh3 and water both the vapors come out of the generator and goes into the condenser and because of the presence of this water vapor in the uh, refrigerant or uh, due to the presence of this water vapor the refrigeration effect of the system will be decreased so so therefore there should be a component which will remove the water vapor and and send only the nh3 vapor into the condenser okay for that purpose or for that reason they have uh, they have taken one more component or installed one more component so that the concentration of uh, nh3 will be increased and uh, water vapor present in the fluid is uh, removed or water vapor present uh, in the fluid which is going into the condenser is uh, reduced or removed okay these are the components uh, evaporator uh, and all these components working uh, we have already seen okay coming to the next slide okay vapor absorption refrigeration system it is one of the old refrigeration system Uh, it was all uh, there are uh, some records where the, there was uh, the vapor absorption refrigeration system was designed designed around uh, 1850 or 1860 60 and this is one of the oldest refrigeration system coming to the uh, this one uh, ammonia and water combination is used and ammonia is considered as a refrigerant and water is as absorbent 
okay that means ammonia goes into the uh, evaporator and produces the refrigeration effect okay mm, the next point is uh, since the see here the boiling point of temp, uh, boiling point temperature difference between ammonia and, and water are not very high so that the separation temperature between the boiling points of these two is not very high for this reason both ammonia and water are generated uh, from the solution in the generator when the solution is heated uh, ammonia vapor as well as vapor both will come out of the generator okay but we we only need ammonia vapor okay in order to separate the water vapor from the ammonia vapor we will use a component known as uh, rectification column and defluorinator okay and since and one more point is since ammonia is used as a refrigerant uh, these systems can be used both for refrigeration and air conditioning okay that is uh, in some cases they will use water as a refrigerant and uh, one of the main disadvantage of using water as a refrigerant is we can't produce um, temperatures uh, beyond uh, 4 or 5 degrees okay or less than 4 or 5 degrees because once it goes into the uh, uh, freezing point the water will be freezed and it, it is formed as ice therefore we can't use that one as um, as a system to produce uh, temperatures uh, less than 4 degrees or 3 degrees okay for this reason but here we are using uh, refrigerant as uh, ammonia therefore ammonia will be having a boiling point of minus 33 degrees therefore you can produce the refrigeration effect uh, less than zero degrees also. So therefore, this is one of the reason mm, where, where it can be used for refrigeration effect as well as air conditioning. Air conditioning case, in the case of air conditioning, we don't need temperatures less than zero degrees. Okay, but in refrigeration, uh, in refrigeration, we need the temperatures less than zero degrees. Therefore, this kind of system or this uh, ammonia water uh, refrigeration uh, vapor absorption refrigeration system can be used for producing. Uh, can be used for both refrigeration, effect, refrigeration as well as air conditioning applications. And see here, they are uh, available as a very small to large capacities. They are uh, they are uh, designed for small capacity handling as well as large capacity handling. That is uh, for domestic refrigeration also it is also used as well as for industrial cold storage also it is used. And see uh, and and one more uh, uh, limitation advantage that we can say is uh, ammonia is uh, is not compatible with uh, brass and copper. That means it will react with brass and copper. Therefore, the entire system has to be designed. Uh, should, it can't be designed with copper or uh, or brass but it should be designed with steel so this is one of the limitation and and uh, and the next point is uh, it was given as uh, the ammonia water system operates operate pressures much higher than the atmospheric pressure the entire system will be running at a pressure higher than the atmospheric pressure therefore the advantage is uh, the outside air does not leak into the system or does not leak into the or, or come into the uh, refrigeration system okay this is one of the advantages but if in some cases entire system will operate at the pressures much less than the atmospheric pressure therefore there is there is a chance of out, outside air leaking into the system but but in this particular system there won't be uh, such system and air leakage into the system is completely eliminated and the last point is uh, one of the disadvantages ammonia is both toxic as well as flammable therefore we need to take certain uh, safety measures uh, uh, our safety precautions has to be taken for this particular reason because it toxic toxics as well as flammable and coming to the vapor uh, and h3 water refrigeration system see here these are the components that are generally present okay it, it consists of a condenser where uh, heat is rejected out into the atmosphere and it consists of a evaporator where heat is uh, taken from the place where you want to cool uh, the this is the evaporator and an absorber which serves as the purpose of a pump when compared with the when you compare it with the vapor compression refrigeration system and the last one is a uh, this one generator and in, in addition to these four things we also have a rectification column and diplomator so this is the component which is used to separate ammonia vapor from water vapor or uh, separate both the vapors only and only send the ammonia vapor into the condenser okay this is uh, the component and it, in addition to this it consists of two heat exchangers the one heat exchanger is uh, installed between the condenser and the evaporator it is called as uh, heat exchanger one or it is also called as subcooled heat exchanger why it is called a subcooled heat exchanger means the the liquid that is coming from the condenser is passed through heat exchanger where it exchanges heat from the vapor is coming out of the evaporator okay the vapor that is coming out of the evaporator will be at a lower temperature and the liquid that is coming out of the condenser is will be at a higher temperature there so there will be a heat exchange process and the fluid that is coming out of the condenser when passes through the heat exchanger gets subcooled and the 
vapor that is coming out of the evaporator and passing through uh, passing into the heat exchanger one at this situation it will be uh, superheated okay and this is that's why it is called as a subcooled heat exchanger and the second heat exchanger that we have uh, that was there is it is installed between the absor absorber and the generator and it is called as a liquid suction heat exchanger where it exchanges heat from uh, okay this will explain the next slide clearly and this is the schematic diagram of uh, uh, nh3 h2o based water absor uh, vapor absorption refrigeration system okay and uh, in the rectification column and deflamator the okay next slide the same uh, where the process is uh, clearly explained let us assume that uh, you can start at any one particular point let us assume uh, started the process or uh, pro let us uh, let us consider the process at point 14 or the green uh, dot that was there okay, at this particular point let us start the uh, explanation at this particular point the what the the vapor that is uh, coming out of the evaporator will be at a lower temperature low pressure and it is a uh, strong solution strong solution means it is um, it is uh, a maximum percentage of the solution is uh, refrigerant okay that's why it is called as a strong solution and it is indicated as ss ss indicates for strong solution lt it is at a lower temperature and lp it is at a lower pressure okay and then it goes into the first heat exchanger there it transfers heat to the or it transfers uh, and there will be heat exchange between the incoming fluid coming or incoming liquid uh, refrigerant coming from the condenser and the outgoing uh, liquid vapor going out of the evaporator and there there will be a heat transfer and the vapor gets superheated okay the vapor will become superheated and the liquid that is coming out of the condenser passing through this heat heat exchanger becomes subcooled okay this will the liquid that is coming out of the condenser this will uh, will discuss about this when we come to the same point in the uh we go to all the components okay and then it goes to the point 1 and this situation at the point 1 it is completely superheated uh, solution is there a superheated vapor is there and from there it goes into the absorber okay and in the absorber what happens in the absorber it will be mixed with the fluid that is coming from the from the generator and from the generator the fluid will be at a the fluid or the the liquid will be the liquid uh, a solution it will be at a it is a weak solution that is it consists of now it is a weak solution and here in the absorber both will be mixed and and the, in the absorber there will be some heat uh, transfer taking place or heat is given out of the system or it is rejected into the surroundings and the fluid that is present in the absorber comes out into the solution pump and point 2 which is before solution pump uh, before reaching solution pump it will be at a low pressure as well as at a strong solution okay low pressure and strong solution and it it passes into the solution pump and in the solution pump the the solution pump is to increase the pressure of the fluid or increase the pressure of the fluid therefore the, you will give some mechanical energy or work input to the solution pump there the the fluid will be pr pressurized and the high pressure fluid uh, uh, which is a strong solution out of the uh, comes out from the solution pump and it goes into the heat exchanger and this it goes into the like second heat exchanger where the uh, the liquid coming from the generator the liquid or the water uh, water coming out of the generator uh, there will be heat exchange between the fluid coming out of the suction pump and liquid uh, uh, the liquid coming out of the generator and there will be some heat exchange and the high pressure fluid a strong solution it gets preheated why they have uh, uh, passed it through heat exchanger is anyway we, when when the fluid passes into the generator we need to give some heat energy therefore here it gets preheated and then it goes into the rectifier column and then from the rectifier column it goes down and goes into the generator portion and in the generator some heat is given as input therefore the temperature raises and uh, because of this heat addition the 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 fluid gets vaporized okay and the, and while vapor uh, while getting vaporized okay both the ammonia vapor is evolved as well as a water vapor is also evolved okay therefore water vapor the fluid coming uh, from the coming into the generator comes from the top and falls into the bottom of the generator form and falls into the generator and because we are giving heat the fluid that is already present in the generator gets heated and it will be converted into vapor and the vapor moves in the upward direction 
and both these fluids move in counter uh, counter uh, uh, or counter flow because one moving from the top and the other moving from the bottom and there will be both heat transfer as well as uh, what uh, heat transfer as well as mass transfer therefore the the solution that is coming moving in the up direction is the vapor okay while it is moving in the up direction it uh, takes all the ammonia that is falling uh, or moving in the downward direction and the, and it gets concentrated okay and and thereby uh, the some uh, a concentrated vapor or concentrated ammonia vapor goes into the into the upper direction ne near this deflamator okay or the, or it will go up and reach the other column uh, which is indicated as 0.5 okay and in the other column here see here here also there is a heat exchanger which is present or uh, there is a, where heat is rejected out into the atmosphere that means they will circulate some cool water in there therefore the vapor that is coming moving in the upper direction uh, hits this uh, cooling uh, cooling water circulated uh, circulated pipes and the temperature gets reduced and some of the vapor which touches the these pipes get condensed moves in the downward direction okay the the vapor that is condensed moves in the downward direction the vapor coming from the generator moves in the upward direction there again there will be some heat transfer or uh, mass transfer and the uh, and the uh, and the uh, vapor will be completely concentrated with ammonia there also there will be mass transfer there the the vapor that is coming out of the deflamator will be at a concentration of 99.9% of uh, pure ammonia where maximum part of the uh, water vapor is uh, removed from the solution okay and and then it goes into the then it goes into point and if you indicate uh, if you see point and okay there the the fluid or the vapor or the fluid coming out of this uh, and it but and and at point 10 it is at a higher temperature and higher pressure and the uh, and the concentration is about 99.9% pure uh, nh3 which is uh, ammonia vapor completely ammonia vapor and from there at point 10 it goes into the condenser the purpose of the condenser is to condense the fluid or convert the vapor into liquid form okay there uh, some because of condensation uh, heat has to be rejected so that uh, the the vapor gets condensed therefore the condensation Q, qc is the amount of heat rejected into the atmosphere so that the vapor gets condensed and the the fluid that is coming out of the condenser will be at uh, uh, will be at 11 0.11 and it is at a high pressure liquid form it is it will be at a high pressure liquid form and from the condenser it goes into a heat exchanger where it exchanges heat or it it transfers it heat uh, it exchanges heat from the uh, fluid or vapor coming from the evaporator there both the heat transfer takes place and the temperature of the liquid will be reduced because when it comes is coming out of the condenser it, the temperature will be at a higher higher point and 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 when it passes through this heat exchanger the heat transfer and the temperature gets reduced yet the liquid temperature gets reduced but the vapor temperature gets increased because of future heat transfer okay uh, therefore it is called because the liquid gets subcooled because of this heat transfer and this heat exchanger is called as a subcooled heat exchanger and from the heat exchanger one the liquid gets subcooled and goes into the expansion valve it is uh, from 12 to 13 it is the expansion valve where the fluid is expanded or the, the pressure is used and because the pressure is reduced and the pressure is directly proportional to temperature the temperature of the fluid also gets reduced therefore <coughs> and at point uh, the po at point 13 the 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 quality of the fluid is it will be completely liquid but it is a at a it is a it is a liquid state and it, and it is at a low temperature okay the fluid will be at a low temperature low pressure uh, strong uh, constant or fully concentrated strong solution and it goes into the evaporator and because the evaporator temperature is more than the uh, liquid temperature there will be heat transfer which will heat transfer and some of the heat heat transfer takes place and the fluid that is coming out of the evaporator will be at a dry state or it will be the vapor state because of this uh, heat transfer and this is how the complete cycle uh, works and and then it reaches the point 14 which is where which we have already started okay this is the complete working of a web and history hydrogen or henry and history water based vapor absorption filtration system in this system the work the work input that we are giving is wp which is given to the solution pump uh, and heat is given as an input in the generator so these are the two inputs that we are giving and the heat rejected are qd is the heat rejected out into the atmosphere okay and it's also the heat given uh, heat rejected out into the atmosphere as well as the absorber at the absorber also qa is the heat rejected out into the atmosphere so this is the complete uh, working of a 
NH3 hydrogen, uh, sorry, NH3 water based vapor absorption refrigeration system. Okay. Okay, uh, okay now we will see how this uh, uh, rectification column diplomator works because uh, uh, we will have a clear picture of this uh, working. Okay, the principle of rectification column and diplomator. Okay, this is the this is the component which is used to separate the NH3 vapor and the water vapor that is present. Uh, uh, that is present. Okay. Now see here at this location, the strong solution and from the absorber is coming at a high pressure. Okay, because it is, it is passing through the solution pump, it will be at a higher pressure, and it passes into the uh, liquid column. The, the uh, so the bottom one is the bottom column. It is considered as a rectification column, and the up and the top column is called as a diplomator. Okay, next slide. <laughs> you see here, this uh, this is the bottom part that we have enlarged, and it is called as a rectification column. Okay, and the strong solution from the absorber passes into the rectification column from the top, and the solution which is already present in the rectification column at the bottom is called as a generator. This this location is called as generator where you use some amount of heat energy, or you can even pass some uh, hot steam or hot uh, waste steam steam coming out of any process plant or. Uh, any ge any generation system or power generation system okay this hot uh, fluid is or heat is given as an input to, into the generator and therefore this solution which is present in the generator gets vaporized okay and it moves in the upward direction and the solution coming from the absorber moves in the downward direction and there will be a mutual heat, heat uh, mass transfer as well as heat transfer between these two systems okay uh, and much will be only the mass transfer because both will be at almost same temperature uh, the there will be a mass transfer between these two. Slowly, the water vapor from the the water vapor gets uh, replaced with the ammonia ammonia uh, vapor. Okay, so this is how the water vapor is uh, reduced up to some extent from the solution. Okay, and the construction is something like it won't be in a straight fall uh, in a straight forward uh, uh, falling down of the vapor, but it will be there will be some restrictions or there will be something like a perforated. Uh, uh, perforated plate or a pack and bed system something like which will increase the uh, time of uh, mutual uh, time of mass transfer as well as uh, location of or it will increase the time of uh, mass transfer therefore more amount of mass transfer takes place and more more, um, more amount of uh, therefore more amount of time is spent inside the column so that the, the mass transfer is maximum okay, from there it goes into the second column from there it goes into the second column which is uh, called as a diplomatic Okay. The the entire part is not called as a diplomator, but the top portion is called as a diplomator. In the diplomator, there is a top at the top location. There will, you will have a cooling water or cooling circuit, where you will circulate some cool water in that, so that the vapor that is coming from the bottom, okay, when it touches the cooling coil or the or some something like a heat exchanger, okay, because of the low temperature, the the vapor gets condensed. Okay, and the vapor which is condensed by touching the cooling uh, coil, the condensed liquid comes in the downward direction, moves in the downward direction, and it is it, it gets in contact with the vapor coming moving in the upward direction. There also there will be have, there will be mass transfer and the fluid coming out of the diplomator or coming from the top of the diplomator will be completely have complete have completely have a maximum concentration of NH3. So this is how they will remove the water vapor present in the a vapor produced in the generator. Okay, they will completely remove or maximum extent. There. Up to a maximum extent, they will uh, remove the water vapor and see that the uh, vapor coming out of the, of the out of the diplomator will, will have maximum concentration of NH3. So this is the working of uh, rectification column and diplomator present in a NH3 water vapor absorption refrigeration system. Okay. Okay, the same same slide was uh, present here also. That. Okay, see here in the, in the in the bottom position we are giving some heat as input, uh, which is Q, which is given as Q. Heat is given as input. That means you are giving some heat energy uh, in the generator. And at the top location Q D, which is the heat charge or heat given out into the atmosphere, which is Q D, because condensation takes place. And see here the points are the strong solution from the absorber enters into the rectifier, which was uh, already clearly explained there. Okay, the vapor rich in ammonia leaves from the top of the diplomator. The 
the strong solution that is coming from the rectifier will have a combination of both water vapor as well as okay. when it re the strong solution when it reaches the the generator will, it will have a combination of both water vapor and uh, NH3 therefore uh, the vapor that is leaving uh, from the diplomator will be rich in ammonia and the weak solution leaves to the bottom of the generator and the weak solution again comes back and falls in the generator okay the heating medium supplies the required uh, heat input QG okay this is the amount of heat given as input QG is the heat given as input in the generator and and heat and heat QD is rejected from the cooling tower. Okay, this QD is the heat rejected out into the atmosphere which is present in the diplomat. Okay, and during this process the solution become weak as ammonia is transferred from liquid to vapor. Okay, the solution that is, the solution becomes weak because ammonia liquid is uh, transformed into ammonia vapor and water is transformed to water vapor. Sorry, water vapor is, uh, water is transformed from uh, vapor to liquid. So, water vapor tra gets transformed to uh, complete liquid. Okay. Okay. And this is uh, this is uh, the working of uh, NH3 ammonia water uh, uh, vapor absorption system. The second type of system is water lithium bromide vapor absorption distillation system. Okay. Uh, the difference between the previous one and this one is uh, there water acts as an absorbent and uh, ammonia acts as a refrigerant. But in this case, water acts as a uh, refrigerant and lithium bromide salt which acts as a absorbent. Okay. Therefore, one of the main advantage of this particular system is the, the temperature boiling point temperature is almost very uh, is very high. Therefore, when you heat the solution in the generator, only the maximum concentration of only comes out of the system. And NH3 because it is a salt, it, it won't get melted or it won't get uh, vaporized. Therefore, this is one of the system, uh, main advantage, and this will re uh, or remove the liquefaction column arrangement that was that we have previously seen. Okay. Therefore, there won't be any rectification column arrangement in this particular system. And but the disadvantage, if you go for this particular system, is uh, because water is the represent, you can't produce a temperature less than uh, okay, because what because we are using represent as water. Water becomes a represent. For once you pass below zero, below, below zero, and depending upon the pressure, it may convert into ice form. Okay, it convert into freezing form or ice form. Therefore, if uh, uh, eighteen temperatures below zero or below four degrees. Okay, that is the one of the main disadvantage in this particular system. Coming to the next slide, okay, lithium uh, bromide LIBR stands for lithium bromide solution. It is a salt solution, okay, and this is a relatively simple one because we have eliminated the rectification column component there, and the vapor generated in the generator is almost pure represent. Okay, here the vapor that is generated in the generator is pure represent, unlike NH3 water solution. Okay, where NH3, where uh, in that particular system both NH3 and water vapor gets vap uh, gets vaporized or get are generated in the generator. There both vapors get generated, but here only uh, water vapor is generated. Therefore, the, it is a it is pure refrigerant that is coming out of the generator. And <coughs> this is the four components that are there. Then, sir, G is the generator, A is the absorber, and E is the uh, evaporator. Okay, because it consists of four shells or four. Uh, uh, it consists of four shells. It is also called as four shell lithium bromide uh, uh, water lithium bromide vapor absorption distillation system. It is also called as a four shell system because four separate shells are there for four compounds. Okay. A stands for absorber, C stands for uh, condenser, E stands for evaporator, G stands for generator, and P. There are uh, there is one pump here, P, which is a solution pump, which is used to increase the pressure of the fluid or pressure of the fluid. And see here, there are there is one exchanger, heat exchanger, which is SH. It's indicated in a red color. SH stands for solution heat exchange. Okay, the solution there, the heat exchange is heat exchange takes place. And and there are two expansion valves. Okay, there are two expansion valves. One expansion valve is per uh, refrigerant, refrigerant expansion valve. When, when the fluid coming from the uh, condenser is at high pressure, so that it comes and mixes with the 
the fluid that is present in the absorber. Absorber will have less temperature, generator will have more temperature. Okay. Uh, slide. The working of the of the this uh, particular system is seen here. So let us start any one at one particular point. Let us start at the green point that is there. That is in between the evaporator as well as the absorber. So if you start at this particular point, the quant the quality of the uh, fluid that is present is uh, low pressure, low temperature vapor that is coming from the evaporator. Okay, the, it is it will be at a low temperature, low pressure vapor that is coming from the evaporator and goes into the absorber. And in the absorber, okay, when it touches the or when when there is, when there is a um, when it touches the the fluid that is coming from the generator, which is coming from there, you will they will spray the fluid that is coming from the they will spray the fluid into the absorber coming from the gen uh, coming from the generator, and this both the vapor and this solution gets mixed and and the 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 fluid gets condensed, the vapor gets com vapor coming from the evaporator gets condensed, and all the liquid is collected at the bottom of the absorber, and the condition of the fluid is low pressure, weak solution. Okay, because it is a combination of both water as well as uh, a lithium bromide salt. The this is a weak solution, and it will be at a low pressure. It is connected to the pressure weak solution and then it goes to the first heat which is solution heat exchange. And in the solution heat exchanger there will be some heat transfer and and it gets some more heated or it, it gets heated. The, the fluid uh, in this first heat exchanger or this the solution heat exchanger uh, transfers heat mutually and it gets heated and then it goes into the generator. Okay. In the generator, the, the fluid quality is something like uh, uh, it is at a high pressure, a weak solution, but at, in a vapor state. At one, at one sorry, it is in a liquid state, not in a vapor state, it will be in a liquid state. Okay. Once it goes into the generator, there you will give some heat as input energy, and because you are uh, supplying some heat as input, what happens? There, there will be vapor generated and the vapor that is generated is completely water vapor because uh, lithium bromide is a salt even if you heat it it won't produce much amount of vapor okay, only a minute or negligible quantity of uh, vapor is generated therefore you can neglect it uh, only the pure water vapor comes out of the generator and the, the generator uh, the vapor that is coming out of the generator will be at a high pressure high temperature vapor okay and from this uh, from the generator it goes into the condenser okay what vapor gets condensed because it, it transfers it heat it's a heat or heat. there will be heat transfer between the fluid circulating inside the condenser and the vapor that is uh, flowing over the condenser. Okay, therefore there will be some uh, only heat transfer to express. There won't be any mass transfer. Uh, there won't be any mass transfer. Therefore the vapor will condenser, <coughs> but it will be at higher temperature as well as at a higher pressure also. Okay, and the fluid that is coming out of the condenser, or if you take this uh, point two, second point, uh, it, it is a high high pressure fluid, which is in a liquid state, and then it goes into the expansion valve. It goes into the expansion valve, and there the pressure is reduced. Once the pressure gets reduced, the temperature of the fluid also gets reduced, and the the fluid that is coming out of the expansion, low pressure, low temperature liquid that is coming out, and it goes into the evaporator, where they will spray the fluid inside the evaporator, and and uh, the heat is uh, heat transfer takes place because they will circulate some water water over the coil and this uh, refrigerant or this water vapor which is at a low pressure low temperature when it falls on the pipes there will be heat transfer and the water water gets cooled and the fluid condensed oh, sorry the, the there will be heat transfer and this qe is the amount of heat transfer that is present and the water gets uh, cooled and most most of the cases this is used to cool Water, water, or uh, is used for uh, air conditioning systems only. And the fluid that is coming out of the evaporator will be at a low temperature, uh, low pressure system. Okay. And this is the, this will complete the entire cycle of uh, lithium uh, bromide or uh, water lithium bromide uh, absorption refrigeration system. Okay. Need out. 
this is the complete cycle here uh, uh, the heat coming out of the system is uh, qa in the absorber heat will be rejected out into the atmosphere in uh, qg the qg is the heat given as input to the in the generator qg is the heat given as input in the generator qc is the heat rejected out into the atmosphere and qe is the oh, okay so these are the four components of heat transfer <coughs> and the work transfer is wp which is the work given as input uh, to the solution pump and the rectification column and deflammator uh, component is completely eliminated because only uh, water vapor is pure water vapor is generated inside the generator okay and the concentration of water vapor will be almost 99.9% uh, the next slide okay and coming to the uh, problems associated with lithium bromide uh, or water lithium bromide uh, vapor absorption in this first one is crystallization crystallization means formation of crystal okay this is the one of the major problem that was encountered there and uh, crystallization is nothing but uh, this uh, lithium bromide salt that is present at one part at, at uh, some operating pressures and temperatures they convert into crystals or they convert into salt crystals and once they once if they convert into crystals what happens they can block the passages or they can block the pipes okay this is one of the main uh, mm, limitation or uh, problems that are uh, one of the main problem that is encountered in, encountered in lithium bromide uh, vapor absorption system okay see uh, during some operating conditions depending upon the temperature and pressure crystallization occurs okay that means uh, this salt solution gets crystallized or uh, salt crystals are formed <laughs> and uh, water lithium bromide solution and crystals of pure lithium bromide exist in equilibrium okay the solution consists of uh, water lithium bromide solution as well as this lithium bromide solution inside this solution uh, gets crystallized okay and these crystals uh, will cause the problem of blocking the pipes okay and this crystallization can occur when the hot solution rich in uh, lithium bromide and you get uh, where uh, crystallization is formed okay the hot solution uh, hot uh, solution rich in uh, lithium bromide is cooled in heat exchange okay because that ah uh, see here uh, if you can see this in, in the solution heat exchanger uh, the fluid that is coming from the vapor will be at somewhat lower temperature from the absorber or from the suction pump solution pump will be at a lower temperature when compared with the fluid coming from the generator if there the temperature of the Uh, fluid comes coming from the absorber coming from solution will be less at less temperature once this uh, hot fluid from the generator gets uh, the, when the temperature is reduced or one because of heat transfer the temperature gets reduced okay. that is at solution heat exchange this is the location where crystallization happens next okay and to avoid this situation uh, the what they will do is they will reduce the the condensation pressure reduction below certain level they could they will reduce the condensation pressure okay the pressure the condenser or uh, the fluid inside the condensation condenser the pressure will be reduced okay this will reduce the problem of uh, crystal and lower the and lowering the cooling water temperature in the condenser should be avoided okay that is uh, the temperature of the fluid flowing inside the condenser we uh, will see that it, they, they won't fall beyond certain particular temperature if it falls falls beyond uh, certain uh, temperature therefore crystallization problem will start therefore they will see every time that the the temperature in the water is not reduced beyond certain particular point okay uh, these are the precautions that we take therefore hence in commercial systems the condenser pressure is artificially maintained high okay the condenser pressure is artificially even though it is requirement to Uh, uh, maintain high pressure they will artificially maintain it at a higher temperature or higher pressure even though the temperature of the available higher uh, pressure even though the temperature of the available okay even though the temperature is low they will maintain high pressure okay, okay. and see here the last point is this actually reduces the performance of the system because you are maintaining more condensation pressure this actually reduces the uh, temperature uh, reduces the performance of the particular system sustain a complete cycle or in order to Uh, in order for a proper operation of the system its uh, modification is necessary okay to avoid the crystallization is it clear so these are the this is one of the main major problem encountered in lithium bromide uh, uh, water vapor absorption system and coming to the next one uh, 
Okay. And in the previous case, what we have seen is a four shell uh, type because the four components are separately placed in uh, four shells. And if you see the uh, pressure limits uh, evaporator and absorber one pressure okay first uh, uh, these two two sets will be separated by a uh, expansion valve and a solution pump okay after solution pump is increased and after expansion valve uh, the pressure is reduced okay? therefore two two components or two sets of components will have same pressure therefore in two shell system a two shell uh, water uh, two shell liquid uh, sorry lithium bromide vapor absorption system they have they have replaced the four shells with two shells because the pressure is almost same in uh, in phase okay therefore evaporator and absorber are uh, housed in a single single vessel and generator and condenser are placed in another vessel one vessel Uh, evaporant, uh, evaporator and absorber are placed in the other vessel generator and condenser are placed okay and the pressure drop between evaporator and absor evaporator and absorber and generator and condenser are maintained okay. then they will see that there won't be much pressure variation between the okay around said okay for same pressure and, and because of this particular uh, arrangement the air leak minimized due to less number of uh, uh, joints Yeah, because once you have reduced the number of shells, therefore number of joints also will be reduced, and uh, this will reduce the air leakage problem. Okay, air coming into the into the component or into the refrigeration system is reduced. Okay, and the working of uh, two shell liquid bromide system is uh, some is present here. Okay, there it will have two shells. The smaller one is the high pressure drum, and the bigger one is the low pressure. And in the low pressure drum, it is uh, both are separated as uh, absorber and evaporator are placed in the low pressure drum and sorry i think uh, it's written wrong eh? and okay this is the evaporator so that Sorry, see here in the high pressure drum, this particular location is this. Uh, the absorber, what we have written, is not absorber; it is generator. Okay. In the low pressure drum, condenser and generator will are placed in one drum. In high, sorry, in the bigger drum, the low pressure drum, absorber and evaporator are placed. In the high pressure drum, which is a smaller drum, condenser and generator are placed. Okay. Here the absorber is written, it was written as absorber; it is actually generator, not absorber. See the working of this particular system. Let us start at any one particular point. We'll go for it. A green dot that was. Uh, there in the uh, bigger drum or the low pressure drum the green dot in this particular location the fluid will be at low temperature low pressure the low temperature low pressure liquid coming inside the or present inside the evaporator goes into the <coughs> refrigeration pump okay see in this particular system you'll have a, uh, evaporator absorber generator condenser in addition to this you'll have a heat exchanger a solution pump and a refrigeration pump so the refrigeration refrigeration pump will be will pump the uh, pump the a uh, refrigerant pump the solution pump will pump the solution mixture of both water vapor as well as liquid bromide water as well as liquid bromide uh, and lithium bromide uh, the the liquid coming out of the evaporator or in the low pressure drum it will be a low temperature low pressure liquid and it goes into the refrigeration pump in the refrigeration pump okay they will pump the fluid up up and passes and the fluid gets sprayed inside the evaporator okay see here when it is passing through the refrigeration pump the pressure of the fluid is slightly increased okay only a, a minute increase in the pressure will will happen and because and it it gets sprayed over the uh, this heat exchanger or this coil okay 
and therefore there will be heat transfer and the water circulating inside this uh, coil gets chilled or uh, gets cool and and because of this heat transfer uh, there will be the liquid present or sprayed on the on this chiller or on these tubes gets vaporized and because you, you, as we have already said that the because of this refrigeration pump pumping the solution uh, liquid at a slightly higher temperature there will be some pressure difference between the, the difference in the same uh, drum but will be there will be some pressure difference between evaporator and the, and the absorber because there is a slightly increase in the pressure the because of this pressure difference from the evaporator side okay the vapor goes into the absorber side okay because of this pressure there will be a small amount of uh, pressure variation or less pressure inside the, uh, around the absorber location okay therefore the vapor that is uh, uh, created or developed inside the evaporator gets uh, goes to the other side right and there it uh, it gets in contact with the uh, solution that is sprayed from the top okay there also there will be some cool uh, condensed water circulate uh, condensed water circulation is uh, happening here there they get sprayed there and there will be mass transfer and the the, the vapor entirely converts into liquid form and th in this location it will be a weak solution lithium bromide plus water okay the water vapor present uh, evaporated in this evaporator uh, or vapor formed in this evaporator gets mixed with this uh, mixed mixed with get mixed and it is converted into lithium bromide and water solution okay and here the, it is a weak solution lithium bromide and water pump it is get it, it they, they are uh, <coughs> and in the solution pump the water gets uh, uh, pumped or lithium bromide water solution is pumped and when and pass it through a heat exchanger and then it pump it to the it is pumped to the generator and in the generator they will use some um, some uh, heat uh, uh, heat as input and they will start they will try to uh, uh, vaporize the fluid okay there the fluid is a combination of lithium bromide and water and once you give heat energy as an input okay the water gets evaporated and this water okay pure water vapor is produced and this pure water vapor goes into the condenser and gets and converted into liquid form okay because both are operated at the same pressure okay the there the liquid gets condensed and this condensed water or this condensation is done because the uh, some cool water or water at a lower temperature is is circulated through the uh, pipes okay and there they gets uh, they gets in uh, contact or the heat transfer takes place and this water vapor when it goes into the condenser side gets condensed and formed into liquid form if you see here the water circulating inside the condenser is uh, the same water that comes from the absorber also. okay from the absorber there from the absorber uh, it is uh, here from the absorber the water is uh, circulated in the absorber and the same water is comes into the condenser and if you see here the water inside the condenser will be at a higher slightly higher temperature than the water the same water circulated inside the absorber okay and in the in the condenser uh, the water gets condensed the vapor gets condensed and, com and formed into water uh, and this, this water which is at a high pressure and slightly higher temperature okay goes into the like uh, yes, goes through the line and passes through an orifice or a resistance and this orifice or a resistance acts as a uh, expansion valve uh, therefore the pressure is reduced there the pressure gets reduced and the reduced pressure uh, causes a reduced reduction in the temperature and then it goes the same way goes into the evaporator and in the evaporator they we get sprayed because the temperature and the temperature is reduced okay there will be heat transfer and the and the, once the heat the heat transfer happens this convert into a vapor and goes into the absorber the other okay this is the complete cycle of a uh, two the two shell system two shell lithium bromide uh, water vapor absorption uh, vapor absorption system so this is the complete working Okay, the next topic we coming to this one, the three fluid absorption system. It is also known as pumpless system because this is also known as pumpless system uh, because the pump that was present in the previous case, be, be, there we are using a solution pump or a refrigerant pump. Uh, this pump location or this pump uh, uh, is completely eliminated in this particular uh, next uh, next one, which is called a three fluid uh, a three fluid absorption system. There the pump is completely eliminated. 
adapted is third is called as a, a pumped absorption system okay so see here it is also called as constant pressure absorption system why it is called as a constant uh, pressure absorption system because in the entire system or entire through the entire refrigeration system the pressure is maintained constant okay whereas in the previous case either in lithium bromide or uh, ammonia water uh, refrigeration systems there will be a high pressure side and a low pressure side okay and we use the expansion valve to reduce the pressure and a pump to increase the pressure okay even in the vapor compression system also we use a compressor to compress the vapor therefore there will be two places where one side one place there will be a high pressure region and the other place there will be a low pressure region but here it is a completely constant pressure therefore the in the throughout the entire system the uh, vapor is maintained at a constant pressure therefore it is called as a strength pressure absorption system also and there is no need for a mechanical pump because we have eliminated uh, a pump mechanism therefore it is the no mechanical pump is required therefore there is no need for mechanical energy or electrical energy and highly reliable with little maintenance due to absence of moving parts because we have not used any moving parts or any pump is used we, we have not used any pump therefore this is a highly reliable system there is no need for any maintenance okay maintenance is uh, com uh, is eliminated to max uh, to maximum extent because of the absence of moving parts and, uh, and the next one is silent operation because there are no moving parts okay it is a the operation is uh, very silent and this is one of the major advantage of this flu three fluid system okay and a wide variety of heat sources can be used to run the system okay you can use any type of heat you can use a steam coming out, waste heat, waste steam coming out of a power plant or a process plant or you can use some lpg uh, lpg or kerosene or solar any kind of uh, heat input can be used heat uh, heat can be used as an input and uh, next one and coming to the applications of this three fluid system the refrigeration for remote and rural areas because there will be a, there is no need for any mechanical energy or electrical energy to run the pump okay therefore there you can install this kind of system in any place even a remote place where uh, electricity is not available okay only requirement is heat source if you get some heat source this uh, three fluid system will work uh, work and we can produce a refrigeration effect and is a portable refrigerator the size of the refrigeration system is also not uh, large okay and and the main thing is the refrigerator uh, for luxury hotel rooms in luxury hotel rooms uh, because it is a because the rooms are luxury uh, comes into luxury part uh, there uh, they, this if you use this kind of refrigeration system or uh, air conditioning system uh, uh, the noise is completely eliminated therefore they are mainly used in luxury hotels as refrigerators and air conditioners and several pump okay the next point is several pumpless systems have been used that is uh, for uh, lithium bromide and uh, nh3 water solutions or uh, nh3 water uh, vapor absorption systems uh, through these systems uh, as we have previously seen they consist of pump and vapor pump or refrigeration pump okay the similar for sim for these two also they have converted the they have converted the system into pumpless system okay They, they have applied the same uh, principle and they have converted the previous uh, vapor absorption systems into pump system and most popular uh, one is uh, platen platen mantas uh, or it is also called as a three fluid vapor refrigeration system this pump uh, the famous one in uh, pump system is three fluid vapor absorption refrigeration system okay the platen mantar or uh, it is uh, or it is also called a three fluid uh, vapor absorption refrigeration system okay it uses ammonia as refrigerant and water as absorbent okay yeah, there uh, uh, if you consider it uh, the, we are using ammonia as a refrigerant and water uh, water as an absorbent ammonia will, will be will convert into vapor form once it goes into absorb as you have previously seen similar type of arrangement is also done here uh, ammonia acts as a refrigerant and water acts as an ab absorbent and there is one more fluid which we where we'll take is uh, they will take hydrogen which is inert gas this is the third fluid okay where this will increase the pressure or uh, this will create a situation something pressure increased in the previous cases or previous uh, refrigeration system okay this we'll see when we go into the actual uh, actual working model and the total pressure uh, pressure is constant throughout the system okay and throughout the system even if you go into condenser or evaporator any location pressure is almost constant it, it, it will work in a constant pressure mode and uh, there is no need for any mechanical pump in this particular system and 
for refrigeration to evaporated low temperatures in the evaporator an inert gas is introduced into the evaporator absorber system okay so once it goes into the, the for uh, in order to produce the refrigeration what they will do they will or uh, they will uh, introduce inert gas into the evaporator absorber system okay. so once you once you in once you introduce this inert gas into the system which is at a larger quantity what happens the partial pressure of the previous refrigerant which is already present in the evaporator gets reduced okay the partial pressure if you compare it will be reduced and this uh, reduction the partial pressure of the refrigerant will reduce the temperature of the fluid okay this that will can clearly see in the actual working there so this is the actual uh, this is a simple block diagram something like block diagram okay it consists of a, all the all the components it consists of a condenser it consists of an evaporator absorber and this generator this this uh, small box is a generator there so this two small box is generator there okay if you start at any one particular point see here in addition to this you will have a bubble pump bubble pump it is a is a pump, even though it, its name is a pump but actually it is it is used for pumping the fluid but not in a me by mechanical means by heating it will uh, it will pump the fluid it, at any one particular point if you see here uh, let us assume that you start at a point from uh, from the outlet of the absorber okay from the outlet of the absorber okay at point 5 the fluid that is coming out is water and nh3 okay water and ammonia it is a solution which is a combination of water and ammonia and it goes into the generator okay in the generator what they do they will give some heat as input and once the heat is given as input the water gets or the fluid gets vaporized okay and bubbles are formed and this bubble uh, bubble pump consists of a small uh, tube with a uh, small cross section the cross section of the tube will be very small therefore what happens the bubbles that are produced moves in the upward direction through the small cross section pipe okay while the bubbles are moving in the upward direction they will carry some water also with the bubble okay while the bubble is moving in the upward direction it, it carries a smaller quantity of water also or the solution also with it in the upper and uh, the the here the while the solution to gravity the water moves in the downward direction and ammonia vapor pure ammonia vapor moves in the upward direction okay see here at the at the junction of uh, at the outlet of the bubble pump there are two lines okay one line indicates the movement of uh, one line indicates the movement of nh3 pure nh3 vapor and the other line indicates the pure water okay and at this particular point at the outlet of the bubble pump uh, the pure nh3 vapor moves in the upward direction or moves in the in direction 1 and the pure water is separated moves along the direction 6 okay and the pure nh3 vapor moves to the condenser and in the condenser the vapor gets condensed because uh, it, they will reject some heat out into the atmosphere and the fluid gets condensed and this condensed vapor will be at a high temperature and this high to liquid form this uh, pure sorry it, it uh, this uh, fluid then from condensed goes into the evaporator and once it goes into the evaporator here see here the pressure uh, it, it goes into the evaporator and the same same time there will be at see here at point 4 pure hydrogen moves into the evaporator okay see here if you go if you see the evaporator block Uh, at point from point to or from condenser pure nh3 is coming into the evaporator and from point 4 at point 4 or uh, the pure hydrogen goes into the evaporator and they will see they will make an arrangement such that from the absorber pure hydrogen goes into the evaporator there the pressure is okay let us assume that the entire system is running at 15 bar okay and in the therefore the, uh, there will be a situation something like nh3 will be around Uh, uh the partial pressure of the nh3 will be around 1 bar present inside the evaporator that go going into the evaporator will be at around 14 bar okay therefore if the because uh, the, uh, the partial pressure of the ammonia is around 1 uh, bar therefore the at 1 bar the nh3 will be uh, will having a, a boiling point of uh, minus 33 degrees 
okay because the power pressure is reduced the temperature of the fluid is get uh, also gets reduced and this will produce the refrigeration effect inside the evaporator is it clear okay see here uh, the third the evaporator it, okay even the absorber or the bubble pump or condenser or evaporator every location you will have the same pressure it is let us assume that it is a 15 bar okay but uh, because of the depending upon the quantity if you <coughs> there will be a mixture of <coughs> there will be a mixture of a pure evaporator as well as a pure hydrogen also coming from the absorber and mixing in the evaporator and if you see the partial pressures of both the fluids the pure nh3 will be around uh, uh, it will be something uh, for example it will be around 1 bar and uh, pure hydrogen in partial pressure okay and this uh, Uh, the, uh, the partial pressure of uh, NH3 being very low, it is around one bar, and at one bar, uh, the saturated temperature of ammonia will be around minus 33 degrees centigrade. And this low temperature is used to produce the refrigeration effect inside the evaporator. Okay, and the maximum or least possible temperature that you can get inside the evaporator. Okay, uh, throughout the evaporator, it won't be at the same temperature uh, because uh, uh, see, let us assume that uh, some some liquid seal I have written here, some dot like thing, orange dot. At this location. Uh, it will have more concentration of NH3. NH3 is it clear? Because NH3 is coming from the top, and at the point four where the the line goes and uh, connects with the evaporator, at this location the concentration of hydrogen will be maximum. Okay. Therefore, if you see here, uh, the, this particular point or uh, at, at liquid seal point, uh, at this the NH3 partial pressure of NH3 will be comparatively higher and. And at this particular point, where, uh, where where it joins the evaporator from absorber, okay, point four, the partial pressure of the or the quantity of ammonia present is very minimum. The partial pressure at that location will be somewhat uh, minimum. Okay, therefore the uh, the temperature that you get will be minimum at this uh, particular region or the region where hydrogen just goes into the evaporator because at that particular location the Quantity of ammonia present is minimum. Therefore, the partial pressure will be minimum, and the temperature attained also will be minimum. And the higher temperature that you can get is higher temperature in the evaporator that you can get is at the liquid seal point because at there the concentration of hydrogen will be less, the concentration of ammonia will be more. Okay. Uh, therefore, this is how you will produce the refrigeration effect, and from there hydrogen and NH3 both fluids goes into the absorber, and goes into the absorber there will be heat transferred out into the atmosphere. That means they will circulate some water there. Uh, there the heat, uh, hydrogen or uh, nh3 is converted into liquid or it is absorbed by water nh3 is absorbed by the water and hydrogen again uh, because nh3 is converted into liquid uh, hydrogen is again liberated or vaporized and this vap uh, pure hydrogen again goes back into the evaporator this is the circle of three or from absorber uh, through point 4 to the evaporator and coming back through point 3 and into the absorber this is the cycle of the hydrogen okay and, and in the absorber the water and uh, nh3 solution gets mixed and this solution again goes back into the generator so this is the complete cycle of the uh, complete cycle or working of a three fluid system and because we have completely eliminated a pump even though the bubble pump it is written as a pump it completely works on the principle of heating only there won't be any mechanical movement okay and the uh, sir in the absorber Uh, uh, the NH3 hydrogen coming from the evaporator gets mixed with the pure water that is coming out of the bubble pump. Okay, here they gets mixed, and in the absorber or the the solution that is coming out of the absorber and going into the generator will will be water and NH3 solution. And from the absorber to the uh, to the evaporator, the fluid that is coming out is uh, or going out is pure hydrogen. Okay, this is how. the complete uh, procedure works and see here the heat transfers that are taking place are there won't be any mechanical work transfer the heat transfers are in condenser heat is ejected out into the atmosphere in the evaporator heat is added into the into the absorber heat is added out of uh, rejected out into the atmosphere okay and qa and qc are uh, going out and qe and qg are coming in qg is the heat given as input in the generator to produce vapor okay there are two heat inputs and there, there are two heats that are, that are rejected out into the atmosphere So this is the complete working of a three fluid vapor absorption system okay and the inert gas or hydrogen can uh, plays an important role of uh, producing the refrigeration effect by maintaining partial pressures uh, uh, required for refrigeration okay 
Now see here uh, the diffusion is produced as the partial pressure of ammonia is in evaporator is much smaller than the total pressure due to the presence of hydrogen. Okay, due to the presence of this uh, uh, hydrogen inside the evaporator, the partial pressure of uh, ammonia will be very smaller, and this is how the temperature gets reduced or the refrigeration effect is produced. Okay, the, and see here, uh, I already mentioned that uh, the and through the entire uh, evaporator, the temperature won't be similar. There will be some uh, low low temperature regions and some considerable uh, uh, variation in temperature also in some other regions. And see, the coldest part is obtained at the end of the hydrogen at the end where hydrogen enters into the evaporator. The point where hydrogen enters into the evaporator at that particular location you will have um, maximum or minimum minimum temperature. Okay, as the partial pressure of ammonia is least at that position because at that location the concentration of hydrogen will be more comparatively the concentration of uh, ammonia will be minimum therefore the partial pressure will be minimum and the temperature also will be minimum at that particular location. Therefore, what you can do, what the advantage of this particular system is, you can create some locations where, if you want a location where you want, uh, where you need to freeze the products, at that you can place the products at the point where you get the minimum temperature. And if you want to place uh, products in, in uh, or if you want to just cool the products, you can place it at some other location in the evaporator. This is what the advantage is. Okay, this effect can be used to provide the two temp uh, two temperature sections in the evaporator. Okay, you can produce two temperature sections, uh, one for uh, frozen storage food or food storage. If you want to f uh, freeze the food, you can place at the location where you will have <coughs> minimum temperature and other for the storage. Okay, normal cooling if you want, you can place it at the other location where uh, other temperature is there. Okay, at uh, minimum temperature, we can use it for freezing the products and uh, other uh, places we can use it for food storage or So this is the advantages and a complete working of a three fluid system. Okay. So this is a practical arrangement, something like the same thing, a practical arrangement there. Okay, anything see here, if you started it, start a generator, okay, in the generator you will heat, you will give some heat as input and due to this, the water or the solution gets evap uh, evaporated and the bubbles move in the upward direction. These bubbles are nothing but the NH3 bubbles or ammonia bubbles are produced and they get they move in the upward direction and while the bubbles are moving in the up upward direction it also carries the water through the through it okay because the cross section is very small and moving upward direction they will carry the water also and in this separator the ammonia bubbles move in the upward direction due to the gravity the water moves in the downward direction okay and these bubbles go into the condenser gets condensed and goes into the evaporator okay in, in the evaporator Okay, from the absorb, uh, the water uh, hydrogen gets mixed there, and the partial pressure is uh, of the ammonia gets reduced because more amount of uh, uh, hydrogen is present in the evaporator because of this partial pressure difference. Okay, pressure difference, uh, the heating of uh, the refrigeration effect is produced in the evaporator, and <coughs> from there both the uh, ammonia as well as the hydrogen comes and mixes in the absorber, and in the absorber. <coughs> because so it is mixed with water again the uh, ammonia is dissolved in the uh, water and uh, the hydrogen goes back into the evaporator this is the complete cycle previous one is the block diagram so this is this is the actual working <coughs> in the generator heat is given as input and in the condenser heat is rejected as well as in the absorber also heat is rejected so this location which is where uh, this is the absorber besides the bulb like thing yellow color this is the absorber generator and separator condenser. So this is the complete working of a free fluid system in the actual uh, cycle, uh, actual working representation. Previous one is a block diagram. So this will this will complete the uh, all the topics from vapor absorption system. Okay, uh, everything was completed. The basic working of vapor absorption is completed. Simple vapor absorption system is completed. Uh, <coughs> lithium bromide uh, was was over. Lithium bromide two shells, four shells, and ammonia water is also our uh, completed. And last topic, which is the three fluid system, this was also completed. Okay, and coming to the la la the last topic is uh, simply just we'll see the comparison between vapor compression and vapor absorption. Okay, one more topic which is pending is uh, uh, absorbent refrigerant combination. Okay, what are the properties that are that are to be present for a that are ideal properties of a refrigerant? Ideal properties of an absorbent. Uh, 
the properties that that need to be there for a combination okay if you want to pick uh, one absorbent and one represent what are the properties that are to be there so these things we'll see in the later classes okay in this class we'll see the comparison between vapor compression and uh, vapor absorption with the okay you see the first point the compression operated and uh, absorption differential systems are heat operated okay as we have already seen compression differential system we use a compressor where the work input is a mechanical work input is there okay <coughs> therefore they are called as a work operated system in absorption differential system more the, the majority of uh, input is work input only okay even in some systems uh, uh, some mechanical energy is required but when compared when this mechanical energy compared with the actual heat energy it is very negligible okay the amount of work that you give as input to the oops, as are very negligible therefore <coughs> therefore this type of system are called as heat operated system and the cop that was generated is uh, is, uh, is high in vapor, uh, vapor compression system but an uh, system it is low because it is low indicates that uh, the actually maximum value is 1.4 Okay, we can't go beyond 1.4 or 1.5 in vapor absorption system. Okay, and see the next point is uh, performance. You see, these are all self-explanatory. A uh, performance <coughs> vary with evaporative temperatures. Okay, or uh, they are sensitive to evaporative temperatures in vapor VCR systems, and they are not very sensitive to. evaporative temperatures okay if evaporative temperatures are varied in uh, vapor compression differential system the performance is drastically cha changed but here it is not changed okay cop reduces considerably at part loads okay at full loads only the cop will be maximum at part loads it will be less for vapor compression system but uh, the depending even the even the though the load is changed uh, this will not affect the cop cop of the drop system okay only there will be minute change in cop but it won't change the liquid at the exit of the evaporator may be <coughs> may damage the compressor okay this is one uh, important uh, thing that need to be considered okay if the liquid that is coming out okay or the fluid that is coming out of the evaporator is in a liquid form then it goes into the compressor in a vapor compression system okay when so the liquid goes into the evaporator this will damage the head of the compressor okay okay therefore this is one this this is the one thing that you need to take into consideration therefore you see that only the pure vapor goes into the uh, compressor Okay, goes as input to the compressor, and this problem will not be there because you are not using any compressor. There. This problem won't uh, won't be there in vapor absorption system because there is no compressor there. Only you are using the pump, which will pump the fluid. Okay. Next. And performance is uh, okay. Uh, even the the condition of the a uh, fluid coming out of the evaporator also will will be there. Okay. The performance is sensitive to evaporative superheat. And evaporative superheat is not a very not very important. Okay, uh, this also the uh, the performance does not depend on the evaporative or evaporative superheat. Okay, and compressive compressive systems there are more number of moving parts and absorption system few number of moving parts. Uh, in compression system regular maintenance is required and the absorption system very low maintenance is required. Because so not using a compressor, a small pump is there and maintenance is low. And here, in compression system higher noise and vibration in absorption system less noise and vibration. Okay. And small systems are are compact and large systems are bulky. In in compression differential systems, you see here uh, the small system very very compact, but larger systems are bulky. The size of the large system will be very huge. But here, uh, <coughs> you see here uh, in absorption system it is uh, it is uh, reverse. Okay, so the small systems are bulky and the large systems are compact. Okay, that means. Uh, Initially, the size of the system will be large, but if you increase the capacity of the plant, the the there won't be much increase in the size of the vapor absorption system. Okay, if you compare the size with respect to the output that you are getting, okay, for smaller system the size will be large, but if for if you go for larger systems, larger refrigeration systems, and compare the with uh, compare the size with respect to output, the if we we can consider it as a compact. and uh, economical when electricity can vapor compression system uh, electricity is the primary impulse to the compressor therefore electricity is a must for compression systems and absorption systems uh, uh, you can use any kind of uh, energy any kind of heat energy or waste energy or solar energy anything can be used and this is economically low cost you can use low cost fuel cost okay these are the comparison some of the comparisons of uh, compression system as well as absorption system. And the remaining topics will start in the next class. So the next topics are. Uh,